Welcome back, tribesmen, to another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video. That is right, we have had Captain Tarples or Carpal Tunnel Soldendrome, which is something many of us nerds can all relate to, I'm sure. His kit reveal has actually come out. Oh, wasn't expecting it. Wasn't expecting it to come out a day early. Normally, we get a kit reveal on a Tuesday evening, which would be the night, but instead we get it a day early. I assume the marquee is coming on Thursday. However, I thought we might as well just go ahead and take a little bit of a look-see and see what's waiting for us in store apart from RSI. Dad jokes are real. All right, so Captain Topples. Captain Topples, Gungans in disguise. Let's take a look at him. He's Lightsider, he's Attacker, and he's a Gungan. Who knew? All of the tags there are incredibly relevant to the discussion today. Key attributes, high damage dealer for gun Gungans. We've heard this before with the likes of Omega, but I'm sure this case will be slightly different. His basic ability deals additional damage to buffed enemies and dispels all buffs on them. Dispelling on a buff, uh, dispel buffs on a basic is actually incredibly valuable as an ability. Take a look at things like Shakti, even Plo Koon, Ahsoka, the young variant known as Snips. All of these characters have dispels on basics and they are awesome. They are great abilities to have. Ouch Time deals true damage to all enemies, which scales with the number of debuffed debuffed enemies. Okay, so similar most likely to the execute ability that we see on Boba Fett, Culling Blade on Vader, that sort of business becomes a juggernaut with his territory battle Omicron that most people won't apply. Unless we get a Naboo planet that requires Gungans, I don't know. I doubt we'll, many people will be applying the TB Omicron. So the inspiration, I don't care where you were inspired from, it was probably from The Phantom Menace and potentially some episodes of some, you know, Clone Wars or something like that. Moving swiftly on. How do we get him? He is going to be a marquee starting on Thursday, guys. The Battle for Naboo number two. Yeah, I, there's a joke in there somewhere. The new marquee structure, this is exactly the same that we saw with Boss Ness. We're going to be earning bonus shards. It makes for incredibly efficient whaling with crystals, okay? So I would recommend everybody at least try to take your tarples up to four stars by using your crystals. It costs 1,300 to get a pack. Potentially gives you a lot of shards. Most likely you're going to get Swevin shards, but try to get him up to that next, uh, next star level so you can actually get him to five stars by the end of the event. It is incredibly cheap, worthwhile, better than shipment farming better than going crazy on hard node farming and you get them sooner do it that's my recommendation for the day scribbles hint of the day did it did did it did anyway abilities basic hey you sir deal physical damage to the target enemy and shock them for one turn the target enemy had any buffs dispel them and deal damage an additional time gungan allies gain advantage for two turns yes advantage is a brand new ability unique to i'm joking guys i'm joking so dispelling on a basic also if they had buffs you dispel them and you deal damage again pretty sweet that also kind of helps with stuff like hey you've got foresight well i'm going to attack you my attack's gonna miss but we'll dispel you'll deal damage again so at least you still do damage all occasions and it will probably help with people that have got like damage immunity and stuff like that stuff like droidica you know oh, it's almost like these guys were designed to beat separatists new special number one ouch time that's me when i get out of bed in the morning i am no longer young deal true damage to all enemies dealing 10 percent more damage per debuffed enemy unfortunately that's only per debuffed enemy not per debuff which means maximum damage or deal is like 60 percent if they have a summoned unit big big sad remove 10 percent turn meter from all enemies enemies without debuffs are staggered for one turn that's quite cool separatist enemies without debuffs are stunned which cannot be resisted that's huge yeah these gungans are just destroying gg basically right yeah and geos remove two stacks of recharge from allied shield generator this ability cannot be evaded that's kind of sick to be honest it's a pretty good special pretty good special obviously really really good against general grievous and separatists in general poor trench he's not really going to stand much of a chance is he special number two no giving up cooldown of four deal physical damage to the target enemy dealing 10 percent more damage per debuff on them and call another target ally to assist so he's got a call to assist which is pretty cool deals more damage if they've got debuffs 10 percent damage per debuffs is really good when you look at things like culling blade and execute from boba vett and darth vader but i am not sure how many debuffs we're really placing boss nash does quite a few We've obviously got a few here, but mm, uh, I don't know. Maybe it'll do good damage. Gungan allies gain crit damage up for one turn and recover 25% protection. That's really good for Gungans because Gungans are already dropping their max health and 
applying that to their protection. So 25% protection recovery is going to actually be a significant amount of protection recovery. Inflict marked on the target enemy for one turn if they don't already have it. If the target enemy is separatist, also inflict any and the enemy leader with marked for two turns, which can't be dispelled, evaded, or resisted. And that's just ridiculous, guys. Like General Grievous is not going to stand a chance. If you are unaware, if you are newer to the game, the General Grievous droid team typically uh, keeps Grievous alive by having him force mark on an enemy when he drops below 100% health, which means you can't actually kill him because there's a forced taunt bouncing all over the place all the time. All right, and that's annoying because when you kill a droid, he takes a bonus turn and does a lot of damage to you. So with this, if you are using this marked ability, no giving up, then you will always get a two-turn unresistible, undispellable mark on General Grievous, which just makes him a lot easier to get rid of. Poor GG. Never gets his time in the sun, does he? And just when they release staff and everything. Alright, so his unique Misa Dink of something. At the start of battle, Carpal Tunnel Syndrome gains 75% max health. Sorry, loses 75% max health and throws that onto protection, going back to that whole protection recovery shtick we were talking about earlier. Whenever Carpal Tunnel Syndrome attacks out of turn, deal bonus true damage equal to 5% of his max protection, which can't be evaded. That's kind of cool. When he attacks out of turn, he's going to do true damage equal to 5% of his max protection, and he's got a lot of max protection. And he and the weakest other gang Gungan recover 10% protection. That's really good. Whenever Captain Tarples scores a crit, remove one stack of recharge from the allied shield generator. Gungan allies gain 5% defense pen for one turn, stacking for each recharge removed from the allied shield generator. Alright, so they're just going to be constantly building up defense penetration, which we know is an incredibly powerful stat to have. Uh, Captain Tarples gains 1% turn meter whenever an enemy is inflicted with a debuff, and whenever a debuffed enemy attacks Tarples, he counterattacks. So don't attack Tarples, maybe. You know, you want to attack that shield droid, droid generator, basically. Um, okay, so 1% turn meter may not sound like much, but it does add up over time, and it's kind of... It becomes exacerbated the faster his speed, because it's a percentile thing. But hey, this is still good. This is still good. If there is an active shield generator at the start of Captain Tunnels, Captain Tunnels, Carpal Tunnels, <laughs> dispel all debuffs on himself, ignore taunts, and whenever he attacks out of turn, inflict buff. Him. That's really good. If the shield generator is there, he gets to dispel all debuffs on himself at the start of his turn. He can ignore taunts. And whenever he attacks out of turn, he inflicts buff immunity. That's really, really good. In TB, this is his TB, Omicron now. At the start of each encounter, Carpal Tunnel gains 20% offense for each other active Gungan ally. Don't know if the shield generator counts as a Gungan. And all Gungan allies gain crit damage up for two turns and 100% max protection until the end of the encounter. So essentially, he's gaining, what, 100% offense? Because this is for each Gungan, not each other Gungan. So it means it includes himself. Uh, so if you've got Jar Jar, obviously, of course everybody's going to have Jar Jar. He's going to have 100% offense. All Gungan allies are going to have 100% max protection. A bunch of their abilities will work off max protection, making them tankier. At the start of each Gungan ally's turn, they remove a stack of recharge from the shield generator, which is then going to convert into de defense penetration for the entire team. The first time each Gungan ally falls below 50% health, they recover 100% health and protection. So they've got a savior mechanic built in at the start of Carpal Tunnel's turn. He has, if he has more than 50% of protection, all Gungan allies gain offense up for two turns. Otherwise, they gain defense up for two turns. Wow. All right. <laughs> Whenever a Gungan ally is dazed or stunned, they dispel it, reset their cooldowns, gain a bonus turn. That's going to make phase one incredibly easy, but who cares about phase one? Whenever Captain Tarples scores a critical hit, add a stack of plasma shielding to the allied shield generator. Overall, a pretty darn good kit so far. It's it's obviously we're, we're, we're working off limited information. We've got another three Gungans yet to join the game. We've got the tank to come. We've got the support unit to come, you know, the Boomadier and the Phalanx characters. And we have Jar Jar, who's probably going to be the piece de resistance, you know, the, the big the big linchpin for the Gungan team. But already we're starting to see, you know, the team synergy coming together. Lots of protection, lots of ability to inflict debuffs, attacks out of turn, survivability. It seems that they've got quite a lot going on, and I'm excited to see what comes out next. 
Let me know what you think about carpal tunnel syndrome with RSI in the comment section down below. Like the video so you do not forget. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Do me a favor. My name's Scribe, but it rhymes with subscribe. Subscribe to Scribe. Do you know what I mean? Do me a favor, guys. Anyway, until the very next video, peace out, and may the force be with you.